Hey y'all, it's Kia from Through His Dream. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Here we're all about prayer, faith, and encouragement. So if you are interested, please stick around, stay tuned, like, comment, and please subscribe. So today's video, we're gonna jump into Isaiah chapter 46 in the Bible. My text is gonna be NIV, and this video may be a little longer than planned because I will read the entire chapter. I'm going to read the entire, entire chapter to you all. Um, so you can follow along. You can also read in your own Bible, in your own translation. You can pause the video and skip a little bit and read it in your translation and see what I got to jump back to. And we're just going to get this started and we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit into this moment and tell him that he can have his way. Usher him in. All right. So, Father God, thank you. Thank you for bringing us here in this one moment, whether it is the early, bright early morning for someone or late in the evening. Lord God, I pray that you come into this place, come to this space. Fill me up, Lord God, with your spirit until I overflow, Lord God. Father God, I pray that when your individual children come to this video, that they don't see me, but they see the God in me, that they see you through me, Lord God, that they don't hear me, Kia, but they hear you, Lord God. So I pray that there's a word for each and every one of your children who come to this video today, Lord God, and even a word for myself, Lord God. I pray that you will use me in this moment, and I pray that this will be a moment that will jolt your kids into being used by you, Lord God. Have your way in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm gonna read Isaiah 46, I already said it. <clears throat> Trying my hardest not to stutter. I also have some music playing in the background, so y'all stay. <laughs> Hold on for me. So, in my NIV Bible, this is mine, um, Isaiah 46 is actually titled Gods of Babylon. So it says, and if I mispronounce anything, y'all, it's okay. Bell bows down, Nebo stoops low. Their idols are born by beasts of burden. The images that are carried are about are burdensome. A burden for the weary. They stoop and bow down together, unable to rescue the burden. They themselves go off into captivity. Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of people, of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and gray hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. With whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me? Will you liken me that we may be compared? Some pour out gold for their bag from their bags and weigh out silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith to make it into a guide and they bow down and worship it. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it. They set it up in this place and there it stands. From that spot it cannot move. Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save them from their troubles. Remember this, keep it in mind. Take it to your heart, take it to heart you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey, from a far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said that I will bring about, what I have planned that I will do. Listen to me you stubborn hearted. You who are now far from my righteousness, I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away, and my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion, my splendor to Israel. So I I read it the whole thing anyway because number one importance. When people give you a verse, yes, always start with a verse. Always start with a small scripture if you can. But it's also really good to read the entire chapter, even if I'm going to talk to y'all from like maybe a few verses of it. So basically, I'm just going to speak to y'all. I made notes in my Bible <laughs> about where um, Father God led me in my understanding, in my reading, in my quiet time. I'm sharing it with all of you and I hope and I pray that it reaches you the same. So the first, I stopped at verse three through four. Um, the listen, me, listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, 
you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born. I just want to stop there. God said, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born. God, I don't get it. God has taken care of us since we were born. Matter of fact, since before we were born. So since our birth, God held us in his hand and he carried us. He carries us and he makes sure that we have everything we need. No other God can do us like that. No other God, little g, of this world can carry us from the beginning of our time to the end. And he continued to say, even to your old age and gray hairs, the Lord just made a statement saying that he is, has carried you from before you were born to being born and he will carry you until you reach your gray stage, your gray hair until you are old in age. And he says that he, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. God will sustain you. He made you, he's your creator. He will carry you and he will rescue you. I always say that God rescued me from the devil and myself. Because in the natural, my flesh, in the spiritual, my flesh wants to do all the things against God. But God sustained me even when I was wrong. God carried me even when I was wrong. He still made me, God, Lord. He made me knowing that I would do wrong. He made me knowing that there was going to come a time where I walked away from him. Yet he carried me through the years. He carried you. He made all of us knowing that we were going to go wrong that we were going to steer ourselves wrong somehow. Yeah, he made you fearlessly. He made you amazingly. Even in that. And he chose to make you. He chose to sustain you. And he chooses to carry you. And he chooses to rescue you each and every day. God knew. Maybe this is where we're going to have to sit in it for a moment. God knew who you were before today. God made you so he knows who you were months, years, time, beyond time. He knew who you were going to be before you ever knew who you were, who you are, who you're becoming. God knew everything about you. Yet he still made a decision to make you. You are alive because there's more. You're here because he knew what you would be and who you could become in him. There's a reason you're here. So that's where we'll sit with Isaiah 46 for the moment. God made you, whoever this is for, for the moments and the times like these. God made you for this very particular, peculiar, specific moment in history. He made you for it. He knew there was going to be troubles and trials. He knew there would be struggles. He knew there was going to come a day if you turn away and walk from him. He knew all of it. And yet he still made you. He sustained you. He carried you through it all. And he rescued you. God, if you are in Christ Jesus, he rescued you. He rescued his children even in the midst of anger of hatred just sin he still made you knowing you were being born into sin and he still rescued you knowing you were born into sin and that there's going to be sinful moments and days in your life god made you for that mm. so i'm going to keep pushing for it i had to sit there for a moment because that's what i was feeling in my spirit honestly so um we're gonna go we're gonna keep breaking it down where i um now the whole verse five through um, verse five through seven basically is like the breakdown of people making idols, and I got out of this. This is basically a breakdown of people making idols. You know, oh God, this world, the world we live in, we have so many idols. <laughs> People have so many idols. It's, it can be anywhere from relationships um, to maybe even school. Maybe your career is an idol. Um, social media is one that I feel like is really like taking on its own form. And 
even um, 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 our own self desires have become idols. We really feel like if I want it, then I should do it. We we idolize our flesh at times, the things we desire that's simple, we idolize it and we, we glorify it by having like these days where we just cater to our flesh. We just, in whatever way that means, we cater to our flesh. Um, but I like, I basically just saying that like, I, I like verses five through seven because it was just, the spot, the part that got me, I'm um, going back forth to my Bible, was where scripture says, from the spot, that spot, it cannot move. Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save them from their troubles. Our idols, y'all, those things you're idolizing, they can't move like God. They don't have a spirit to move like God. The way God moves, then nothing can move like God. They're not living gods. They're just little gods, G. Some of them are actually man-made that we glorify. Social media is man-made very much a man-made thing that we put a lot of trust and faith in. We let it give us fear, doubt, we let it stir up a lot of confusion in our hearts and in our lives and we just give into it y'all, we do. And, but when he said, even though someone cries out, I don't know about you, but I've had so many moments where I've cried myself to sleep. I've cried out to God to help me. I've had down moments where I went to social media. Now this is real. I had moments where I was down and I went to social media to find a perfect quote. If that's you, you understand what I'm saying. I went to social media to find a perfect quote for whatever I was feeling. And the crazy part about it, and I never thought about it until right now, is that I never felt better. None of those quotes made me feel better. None of them. Most of them weren't rooted in God. A lot of them just, they weren't. They were they were pleasing to my flesh and my emotions in the moment. So whatever I was feeling was the quote that I was posting. And it never made me feel better. It almost made me feel worse. It's kind of like we go to music. See, we think that we don't idolize things. And we think that's just, we just go to quote to express what we're feeling. We go to music to express what we're feeling. But really it's almost, idol it's almost idolatry. Because why didn't you just go to God? Why were you feeling hurt and upset we had to go find a quote to post? The perfect quote for people to read to know that you're upset. Why didn't you just go to God? And pray to ask God to take this feeling away. To remove it from my heart, to remove it, Lord God. Or don't remove it, but to give me the strength to endure it. Why didn't we just go to God first when we felt those feelings? It always blows my mind that people will be depressed, anxious, or just upset, and will go find a song that glorifies depression, anxiety, and being angered and upset. We'll find a perfect song to match how we're feeling in the moment. And we think it's supposed to make us feel better, but in fact, it's just making it deeper and deeper. The hurt is rooted deeper and deeper, you guys. You wonder why you're still in the funk. Check your music. You went to the music to find the healing when the only healing you can find, the only perfect peace that you can find is in God. We can't find it anywhere else, continuing on. And I get down to verse eight, no, nine, where God just straight up says, I am God and there is no other like me. I am God and there is none like me. Enough said, right? I just spoke about the idols, we have idols that can't give us the peace in the world is so false it's nothing like the peace of god absolutely not um and the last thing that i'll kind of touch on and i'm gonna say what i feel on my in my spirit on this on verse 12 through 13 listen to me you stubborn hearted you who are are now far from my righteousness i am bringing my righteousness near it is not far away, my, and my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion, my splendor to Israel. So the way I feel it in my spirit with this. So again, go to God, read the scriptures yourself, and have and ask God to give you a fresh revelation for yourself as well, just in case. But it was it just really got me that He said, "You stubborn-hearted people." who are far from my righteousness. I am bringing my righteousness near. For me that sat in my spirit, if you're like me or any other human who's in Christ, then 
who've been through things. You've had moments where you felt the furthest from God you could have ever been. You felt like God was just so far off. How can I get him? How will he come back? And I just want you to know that God came for the, God came for you. God came to you. I am bringing my righteousness near. So I feel it for me that whoever feels like they're so far from God in this moment, that how can I possibly get back to God? Just know this, God's coming for you. God is chasing after your heart. God chases after us and wants us to chase after him. God never, when you feel far from God, just know he's right there with you, waiting for you to even take a glance back, to even stop in your tracks and think, I might need to turn back around to him for a moment. God is chasing after your heart and he's bringing himself to you because that's how much he loves you. God loves you so much that he will bring himself forth to you. He'll bring himself to you. God, I did this, God, I did. He will bring himself to you, you guys. He said, I'm bringing my righteous, righteousness near. It is not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. God's timing is perfect. There's no delays in it. I will grant salvation. Now, the definition I looked up for the word grant also meant give. Or a synonym for grant was give. I just think it's a perfect way to tie off Isaiah 46. That God will give salvation to Zion. God will grant salvation to his people. The video is long enough, you guys. I just wanted to pour out what Holy Spirit has laid on me about Isaiah 46. And I really do pray that you take this word, um, that you go to the Father with it, that you read Isaiah 46 for yourself to get a fresh revelation, fresh revelation, a fresh fire in your soul for this. And I pray that this word has blessed you and that it will push you forth in Christ. Um, love you all. Peace and joy. Until next time.